Hello, I'm Ward Marston, and uh, I want to tell you something about a project that I'm working on for uh, a, the, my CD label, Mark, uh, CD label, <laughs> Marston Records, uh, which uh, my partner Scott Kessler and I have been uh, running since about 1997. Our label is aimed at uh, reissuing the great recordings of the past concentrating on vocal recordings of serious music and also piano recordings and uh, our website is www.marstonrecords.com um, if you're interested in taking a look at our website which I hope you will anyway today I'd like to talk about the great Irish tenor John McCormick and a project that we are beginning to uh, work on. We are uh, producing in the next year a 17 CD set which will contain all of John McCormick's electrical recordings from 1925 to 1942 plus a complete edition of all of his very early records made for the gramophone and typewriter company in 1904 and all of his cylinder recordings made for the Edison and the Edison Bell companies in 1904 and 1905 and then finally, we will also be including uh, all of John McCormick's known extant uh, radio broadcasts from the 1930s. So it's really quite an ambitious production. And I thought that today I would make a couple of a uh, few videos, uh, short videos for YouTube um, to basically demonstrate some of the, th the things that we will be including um, on our 17 CD set and basically talking about uh, how I go about my work. So today I would like to show you John McCormick's very first record. <clears throat> this is a seven inch uh, G&T gramophone company record. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, for those of you who are not old record collectors, you don't probably know this, but these very early records were only printed on one side. And so, and Mark, I don't know, should I hold that differently? So, people, okay, so that you can see the, uh, you can see the design on the back. Um, these records were only pressed on one side. Now, the, the seven inch record was the first kind of disc that was produced um, by the by Emil Berliner, um, who was the inventor of the disc gramophone, which was the competitor of the Edison cylinder uh, in the early days. And uh, uh, these seven inch discs were, were produced in the late 1890s and in the early 1900s. But by the time McCormick made his records in 1904, these seven inch records were being phased out. Uh, but it was felt that John McCormick should record some seven-inch records for the market, uh, be, for the Irish market, because it was felt that a lot of people still had machines that would only play seven-inch records, that would not play any larger records. So he recorded um, the same selections on the seven-inch record, and then he would do the same recording on a 10 inch record and uh, there are little differences between the, the recordings because he would sing them a little bit differently and so on but it's basically the same recording sometimes uh, some of these 7 inch records have a, a trunk are slightly are somewhat truncated uh, because they couldn't fit as much music on the record uh, the 7 inch record could only accommodate about two and a half minutes and the 10 inch record could accommodate about three and a half minutes at the most so sometimes he would only sing uh, a single verse of a song on the seven inch record, but on the 10 inch record, he would record two verses. So let's see what one of these seven inch records sounds like. This is his very first record called Killarney um, by Balf, uh, Michael Balf. Um, and let's see what this sounds like. Now, I. Uh, when I play a record, I don't really know two things about what I'm going to do. One is I don't know what the stylus I'm going to use is going to be because I have about 30 different size 
playback styli. A stylus looks like this. Um, and uh, I have a, 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 a large number of, ver of different sizes. And for every record, there's always an optimum size stylus that will give you the best sound and the least amount of surface noise. Um, well, with these old records, they all have a lot of surface noise, but there will be a stylus that will do better than others. So let's just, I have this playing at about 78 RPM and I have a stylus in here that is not going to give me very good sound, but I'm hoping you'll, uh, you'll hear this and you'll see. Okay, you can hear that it's mostly surface noise and not much of John McCormick. So we can't tolerate that, can we? So I'm going to put another stylus in that will be, I know it's going to be better, and probably will be quite good, actually. So let's see what this sounds like. Okay, now, <clears throat> what's wrong with that record? Well, the, what's wrong with it, it is going to, it's playing at the wrong speed. McCormick sounds like a, a chipmunk. So, let's see about lowering the speed. Now, I have a little pitch oscillator here. And right now it's playing at about 78 RPM. And um, it's was sounding just a little a bit above A flat. So I'm going to pitch this down into the key of G. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sound a D, natural, and that is the fifth note in the scale of G. And it's easier for me to tune the record using uh, the fifth to tune against. So now I'm going to lower the speed until I get it where I want it. And I've got it pretty much in tune. And I'm going to ask my assistant here, uh, because I don't know, um, I, I can't, because I'm totally blind, I can't read the speed readout on the turntable. So, Mark, what speed am I playing this at? 73.5. 73.5. So, those of us who call these records 78s realize that 78 is quite a misnomer, because these records can play at any speed. I need to do some research here because I'm not sure that that speed is actually correct. That might be too low. G might actually be too low. It's possible that this record should actually play in a true A flat. And of course, it's also possible that the piano in the studio of uh, the G&T company was tuned uh, below the pitch of 440, which is what we use today. It's possible the piano was tuned at 435. But I'm going to tune this record up at just a little bit above, a little bit below A flat, to see what his voice sounds like in, in that key.
I think that's the correct speed. And what's, Mark, what am I playing this at now? What's 75.3. 75.3. The voice still sounds a little bit high, but don't forget that McCormick was 20 years old and he was untrained. So over the next few months, I'm going to do a great deal of research and playing of different records to try to determine whether this voice is correct or whether the G major voice is correct. Um, and part of that will be by measuring the speed of the vibrato of McCormick's recordings um, of these recordings played against recordings that are a bit later where we actually know the speed. Uh, for example, his 1910 Victor of Killarney is in, is, uh, is, we can use that as a Rosetta Stone because we know uh, what's key, the Victor recording from 1910, we know what key it's, it's uh, sung in, it, what key he sings it in. So we can measure the speed of the vibrato and perhaps determine what the proper pitch for these 194 records should be. So that's what I'll be doing in the next couple of months, and I hope you'll all stay tuned.